Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the WITSA ICT Excellence Awards. And uh, before we begin the actual awards ceremony, I have a very, very, very special announcement to make. You're going to meet a man who is uh, world famous for what he does, and once you find out what he does, you are going to be taking a message home that you will never forget. I'm not going to give too much of an introduction because we're going to provide his full back, uh, biography a little bit later. But before we uh, introduce our guest, let's see what he does for a living. When you try your best but you don't succeed When you get what you want but not what you need When you feel so tired but you can't sleep Stuck in rivers And the tears come straight Let me introduce to you the man who's responsible for providing free surgery and changing the lives of over 300,000 children in 60 countries, Dr. Bill McGee. Thank you very much. It's a, it's a real pleasure to be here with you. I can tell you that um, 
I've known Jim for a long time right now, and I love coming to conferences like this because I, I learn so much. And in life, there are no ordinary moments. Most of us never really recognize the most significant moments of our lives when they're happening. It's back in about 1998, I saw an advertisement to come to a World Conference of Information Technology. I applied. Jim gave me a call out of the blue, and he said, you know, this isn't a medical conference, it's technology. I said, I know, but I think technology is going to be the future. How are we going to reach everybody if I don't understand this stuff? So I kind of talked my way into that conference up in Northern Virginia. A few years later, I spoke in Taipei to the conference where Bill Gates was and Chambers was and all that stuff. Man, I was learning so much. Then in Malaysia, a few years later, now the opportunity to come here and to speak with all of you. And I can tell you what you do is incredible. You're probably with each other all the time and you don't realize it. But just think of the things that you can do today or that we can do today because of what you do so very, very well. I really believe that you don't ever realize what's going to affect you until after it's happened. And so back in 1982, my wife and I were given an opportunity to go with a group out of Houston, Texas to go to the Philippines to take care of kids with cleft lip and cleft palate. Now, I have a dental degree, a medical degree, and so I was really focused on the face. So I wanted to go. My wife is a nursing background, pediatric nursing. She wanted to go. We took our 13-year-old daughter, who is the oldest of our five children. She was my scrub nurse for the week. And when we got down into the Philippines, half the world away, I had never been there. Landed about 6.30 in the morning, musty smell of a tropical country as we got into the airport. Took a bus to the hotel. And as we did, we crossed a, you know, an inlet with stagnant water and shanty huts. And so I could just recognize that. But as I looked closer, there were a couple of women that were crouched down, that were cleaning vegetables and that water that they would later feed to their kids. And I thought, man, that is disgusting. But minutes later, we were in a five-star hotel drinking rum swizzles in the pool. And I've often thought, what would it have been like if I had gone there as a tourist? Probably would have stayed in a nice hotel, maybe gone down to Legaspi, Mayan volcano, one of the most perfect volcanic peaks in the world. Beautiful, beautiful setting. Every place you look, beautiful kids. You take out your camera. And there's in the, in the fields, peasant planting rice plowing fields. Yet when we went to the hospital, 300 families came at us. Every one of their parents tugging at our sleeve, begging us to take care of their child. Every one of those kids had a gaping hole in the lip and roof of their mouth. They couldn't eat. They couldn't speak an intelligible word. Yet we could only take care of about 40 kids that first year. Watched as over 250 kids got turned away. I'm telling you, it was one of the most difficult things I have ever had to do in my life. Everybody had a need, but there was nobody there once we left to take care of those kids. We saw that in as little as 45 minutes, you could take a child from hopelessness to possibility. And yet the reality was, is that those kids were always going to live like that. Lady was the head of the hospital the night before we left, said, you know, someday, if you can come back, five years from now, 10 years from now, please come back, because these kids will still be here. They'll just be five or 10 years older. And she didn't say it with any anger or hostility. It's just the way it was. And I can tell you that what impacted us and maybe changed our lives the most was the next day we were walking outside the hospital and a lady came up to us with her daughter at her side. Maybe her daughter was about eight years old. Big hole in her lip. She was carrying a ripe basket of bananas. 
She said, I'd like to give these to you as a gift. It's the only thing I have to give you. But I'd like to give it to you as a gift for trying to take care of my daughter, even though we had turned her daughter away. The only thing we could hope to say is maybe next year, but we knew there was no next year. We knew the group we were with wasn't going back. Here's this lady with tears coming down her cheeks. We have tears coming down our cheeks. And I think it was at that moment that Operation Smile was born. Kath and I said, well, why don't we get a group of our friends? We'll go back. We'll take care of those 250 kids. The world will be wonderful. Our guilt will be gone. And then we'll just go back to our lives than usual. That is exactly what happened. And I've learned that reason leads to conclusion. It's emotion that leads to action. And so many times we're schooled and, oh, you got to logically think through this, you logically think through that. And yet the reality is, as we heard today from Surf, it, it, it's really not just that. It's risk-taking. It's getting out there. It's following your heart and leading you to what then your mind can put together. And so as we went on, I started to see things that I never anticipated seeing. This young man was 35 years old. He had never been to school. He couldn't read. He couldn't write. And I took care of him literally on a stretcher under the light of the windows in a hall. And in about 45 minutes, brought him back to see his mom. I brought him back to see his mom, and his mom said, well, that's not my son. And I said, well, sure it is. She said, no, it's not. So I took a mirror out of my pocket and I showed it to him. And as he looked at it, he began to cry. And I've often thought, what would it be like to go through 35 years of your life and to never whistle? What would it be like to go through 35 years of your life and to never feel the gentleness of a kiss. Because someone didn't have 45 minutes for you. It's just ridiculous. And I think that when we start to put things in that kind of perspective, we start to see the world maybe in a little bit different way. I can tell you of a story of this boy who came to see us. He was 13 when he quit school, 16 when I saw him. He had come to the hospital, and I was in the operating room, and somebody said, you see that kid out there with the blue bandana? I said, no. He said, well, he had a problem. It was way too big. There was nothing we could do for him. I said, why don't you see if he can come back? Maybe we can do something. And so they put on the radio, well, the boy with the blue bandana come back to the Cameron Sore Hospital. Later on that afternoon, he came back with his uncle. And when I saw him, I realized there was nothing we could do for him. He had malnutrition and infection that had eaten away his nose and upper lip. But I promised him then that we would try to get him to the States so that we could fix him. Now, I came back home totally committed to trying to help him. But for six months, I was totally unsuccessful. Until one day, a businessman came into my office and I showed him Ontario's picture. He said, that's no problem. He said, I'll fly him over here tomorrow. But logistically, we got a lot to do before that. So let's go up and see our senator in Washington and get some help. Next day, we flew up on Eddie's plane, got into Senator Paul Tribble's office, sat down. Within minutes, Senator Tribble was there. I knew then that Eddie had contributed significantly to that senator's campaign. Eddie said, look, I'm behind this. My family's behind this. I'd really appreciate your help. Senator Tribble said, that's no problem. I'll call Ambassador Bosworth in the Philippines. We'll get him a visa. I'll call the uh, Philippine Air. We'll fly him on over. And literally in two weeks, this kid was in Norfolk, Virginia. Now, why was he so successful in two weeks? And why was I so unsuccessful in six months? The reality is if Operation Smile was going to be successful, it couldn't just be doctors and nurses. It had to be business people. It had to be political leaders. It had to be people like yourself and technology. It could really transmit a message. 
And so from Ontario, I learned a tremendous amount. Now, I can tell you this was Ontario when I first saw him. This was Ontario after we had reconstructed his face. But I can tell you one of the most remarkable things that I have ever seen was to be able to go back a number of years later, go down that long, muddy road that led to his house. He had gone down it with us before. He climbed a coconut tree to get something down. Hundreds of kids were still around him. Got the coconuts for us to have something to drink. He brought the water buffalo in from the field so we could take pictures on it. Introduced us to his family, all who lived in that little dirt floor, Nipa hut. And really, I mean, he totally did everything. But when we went back to get him and to see him again, he climbed that same coconut tree. Brought that same buffalo in from the field introduced us to his family, all who still lived in that Nipa hut. But this time, he introduced us to his wife and his little nine-month-old baby that he could have never had if it hadn't been for the businessman, if it hadn't been for the political leader, if it hadn't been for hundreds of people, I don't even know their names, who decided the dignity of one kid's life was worth their efforts. To me, that's what Operation Smile is about. It's never about one person. It's about all of us working together to do something special. And life is a contact sport. Who you meet today will introduce you to somebody tomorrow, will introduce you to somebody else. I wouldn't be here if I didn't meet Jim Poisson back in 1998. So you can never tell what's going to happen. You can never tell what people have to offer you. You just have to accept it and go with it. Now, I can tell you, I didn't anticipate meeting Paul Smokey, who was with Microsoft. I met him on a plane coming back from China. Paul Smokey started to talk to us about Operation Smile. Next thing we knew, we were talking to a lot of people at Microsoft. Next thing we knew, Paul Smokey was introducing us in Vietnam to the people from Slancha who helped us create a computerized medical record that could be simplistic, that we could all essentially have a paper record underneath a piece of glass so that we didn't have a big startup time teaching people how to use it. It was just like they were using their chart. And we could start keeping records so that we could start putting together 300,000 patients and find the cause of these things. What works? What doesn't work? I couldn't do that without technology. And it was Microsoft who opened that door for us to help us make a computerized medical record. They helped us do volunteer records with 13,000 volunteers now around the world. How do you credential them all? How do you make sure that they're all qualified? How do you make sure you get them on the trips when you want to get them? It was really that. These people come from 85 different countries. How do I do that without technology? How do I understand what works and what doesn't work if I don't have pictures to see a before and after and to be able to judge the results? Is it a good result? Is it a bad result? Does the person know what they're doing? Do they not know what they're doing? Really, so where are we today? We're in a beautiful office, 300 employees worldwide. Polycom has given us all of our hardware. Microsoft has given us software to use. Where are we today? 13,000 volunteers around the world. Where are we today? 60 countries putting out 180 missions a year, about three every week, or someplace in the world taking care of kids and developing relationships. Every trip has an average of seven countries involved. I have never once heard anybody talk about race, religion, culture on a trip. Never. Why? Because I think the strongest bonds of friendship get forged in the service of others. You and I may have nothing in common, 
But if we work together to help a third person, we'll become friends. It is amazing how children will bring us together. So where are we today? Close to 300,000 kids have been served. This fellow was from Rwanda. Here he was before. Here he was later. Here he is back in his village with his mom, his sister, and his niece. A totally different man. But why did it take 25 or 30 years to reach out to this poor guy? Is that right? When we all know how to take care of it? No, it's just not fair. And in a world where we're thinking about all the grandiose things, what if we just brought it back to home and said, at least let us take care of things we know how to take care of? Let's do something there. So what's our vision for the future? Our vision for the future is to have consistent, reliable Internet access. Is that possible? Maybe not in my lifetime. But you all know how to do it. We need you. We can't do that. I went 17 years to school to learn what I did. There is no way in the world I know or could ever know what you know. I can tell you, what if we develop facial recognition software so that we could take a picture of that before, as soon as that kid got off the table, take a similar picture of the after, took the chip out, put it into a little program, and it scored from 1 to 10, whether the result was poor to great. What if we had that immediately so at the end of every day, we could have a surgeon of the day, or the best case of the day, or the best case of the week. Why? So that the best people could teach the people who weren't the best how to be better. What a gift that would be to the kids that we took care of that next week. What if we were able to differentiate this result, which really isn't that good because it's not symmetrical, the nose isn't as symmetrical, what if we could figure out how that was different than that result? Because that is beautiful compared to that. What was it that differentiated those two? What technique was used? How do we document that? How do we replicate it? How do we teach it to other people half the world away? You all know how to do that. We need you. What if we innovated voice recognition so that a kid with a big hole in their palate who can't speak intelligibly so will never socialize in their life? What if, beyond that, we were able to put something in the mouth, a little wand, and take like a 3D image of the palate and take that chip out, put it into another little thing that printed an obturator? that closed that hole and allowed that kid to go home an hour later or a day later with a prosthesis so they could talk intelligibly. My God, hundreds of thousands of kids would be brought back into society in our world. One out of every 500 is born with a cleft. You take a population of 100 million, that's 200,000 kids in that country. What if we could return them to a normal life. What if we could find out what caused this? If you take, we have 10,000 genetic samples now, more than anybody in the world with clefts. They're being studied at USC, University of Southern California. But to do that, think of what it takes. There's 440 terabytes of information. So a home computer would take 140 years to process that. The U.S. Library of Congress has only 422 terabytes of information in the whole Congress. But in order to be able to adequately study that and find all those little genes that cause it, we need something big. And so let me give you an example of that. The lady that's in the background right there is mom. These are the three kids. Two of the kids have a cleft. The mom ended up developing gastric cancer. 
So the mom, all of a sudden, had a gene that developed gastric cancer. Now, when they tested the two kids with the clefts, they found out that the kids had that same gene. What if the kids with the cleft had had their genes tested when they were born? They would have seen that the mom was going to get gastric cancer and they could have saved their mom's life. What's that worth? You have the ability to find those answers. You have the ability to draw that in and to analyze all those specimens that we collect. You have the ability to change so many things if we all use our gifts together. So let me tell you how simplistic that is. This is Ethiopia. These three men or three boys in the same family. Two of the boys had clefts. The mother died the year before. The father remarried. The father ousted the two boys and ostracized them because he thought they were a curse on the family. The older brother took them under his wing and brought them into the hospital. The young boy still had his spirit. He could still smile, look you in the eyes. The older fellow, 17 years old, could no longer look in the face. He wore a baseball cap, pulled over his eyes, a mask over his face. I saw him in the second floor lobby. And I was introduced to him. I went up to him and I said, would you shake my hand? He limply shook my hand. I said, no, squeeze my hand. After about 30 seconds, he finally squeezed my hand. I said, now, would you look me in the eyes? And as he looked me in the eyes, his hand went limp again. I said, no, look me in the eyes and squeeze my hand both at the same time. About 30 seconds later, we got that down. I said to him, I can promise you that we can fix your lip tomorrow, but we've got to change our attitude because I can't heal your spirit. You've got to do that. So let's start looking at life differently. Let's start realizing that your cleft lip is your gift. You've been given the gift of a cleft lip. And forever, you'll be more sensitive to the needs of people in your village, your community, than most people will. So let's make a deal. I'll promise you we'll fix your lip tomorrow. If you promise me, you'll use your gift for the rest of your life to help other people. Every one of us in this room has been given a gift. It's how we use that gift that will change other people's lives and our own lives in the same process. Surgery is tremendously underserved. More people die in our world from lack of access to surgery than malaria, AIDS, and TB combined. When you take a look at our world, the reality is in the lower third of the world, and economically, only about 4% of the surgery of the world is done. 85% of kids, by the time they get to 15 years old, would need a surgery. That just doesn't happen. So how are we going to change that? We have to lead with purpose. We have to realize that the gifts that we've been given have a chance to dramatically do basic, basic things not just big things. And so I say to each of you, it's an honor to stand up here with you. It's an honor to be able to show what we do on that service side, but to say to you very, very humbly, we need you. We need your help. Together, we really can make miracles happen. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, that, what Bill had just done is the essence of what this World Congress is all about. 
There's no reason why we can't use our resources, our wonderful, miraculous tools of ICT to not only help Bill and his, his efforts, but thousands of other people and millions of other children that need our help. So Bill, I want to thank you and congratulate you and, and, and wish you well uh, in, the, in the future. And I really appreciate you being here. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jim Poissant and I'm the Secretary General of WITSA. And for those of you who are just joining us, I'd like to just mention to you that WITSA stands for the World Information Technology and Services Alliance. We are a, uh, an alliance of leading ICT associations in 82 countries. And we represent 90% of the ICT industry. Acespro is our member in Brazil. And, it, and of course, Acespro is the host of this Congress. We are proud to con uh, continue a tradition of recognizing excellence in the use of ICT technologies. And the first WITSA Global uh, ICT Excellence Awards were conducted uh, in uh, Taiwan in the year 2000. There are four distinct ICT Excellence Award categories. Uh, they, are, they are Global ICT Excellence Awards, Emerging Digital Solutions Awards, the Chairman's Award, and Eminent Persons Award. Now I'm going to be fairly quick with the announcements and there's not gonna be speeches. Uh, we're going to recognize a lot of people uh, in a very short period of time. There are, there's an award category called Merit Awards and, I, and, and there, are so, there are a number of these and I, I don't know how many folks came in from around the world uh, as a Merit Award winners. When I read the Merit Award names, I would ask everybody to stay, stay still for a moment, and at the end of the, the five major award categories, please come to the stage. You will be recognized, you'll shake the hands of the chairman, and then we will have a special uh, photograph uh, session after the ceremony so that uh, we can take our time and get a nice photograph with you. So, the award winners have exhibited exceptional achievement in one of six categories, public sector, private sector, digital opportunity, sustainable growth, mobile, mobile excellence, and emerging digital technologies. In addition to the ICT Excellence Awards, one special Chairman's Award will be presented to the nominee selected by our chairman from the entire group of award winners. There is one overall award winner in each category. The award winners have been selected by a group of judges from around the world, both inside and outside of WITSA. These awards demonstrate, must demonstrate, a high degree of effectiveness and innovation in applying information and communications technology. I wish to congratulate all of the, the winners and all of the competitors for doing a superb job in bringing the benefits of information and communications technology to nearly every aspect of human life. Contributing to what WITS's vision is and what the theme of this Congress is, fulfilling the promise of the digital age, which means to us that when the day comes when everyone on earth who can is benefiting from ICT, when Bill gets his dreams come true because technology is enabling what he's doing, our job will be done. And at this time, I'd like to, uh, it's my pleasure to invite Mr. Santiago Gutierrez, the chairman of WITSA, to present the awards. Mr. Chairman. And uh, acknowledgments, basically acknowledgments. We know that the people we are going to award they did this with no expectations of awards, and I hope that they keep doing this with no more expectations of more awards. That, that's really, you know, the drive is inside yourselves, and awards are almost an accident in your road, a happy accident, but we would like to acknowledge that tonight. Thank you. Jim? Thank you, Santiago. The first award of the evening is the Public Service ICT Excellence Award. Government entities 
and nonprofit organizations are eligible to be nominated in this category. To be nominated, a government entity or nonprofit organization must, in its delivery of services, use information communications technology to, one, improve government effectiveness in serving its citizens, two, save money, save time from government and, and productivity in government operations, and three, to improve the access and the quality of services within the government. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege to announce the winner of the Public Service ICT Excellence Award. The winner is the Seoul Metropolitan Government and Clean Construction System, Seoul, Korea. <laughs> to, I'm going to invite Dr. Wu Kian Park uh, from the Federation of Korean Information Industries, our WITSA member, to join Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Santiago Gutierrez in presenting this award. The award is given to Mr. Jung Jun Kim, the director, Seoul Metropolitan Government. Four, four, four. Ladies and gentlemen, please congratulate Mr. Kim, please. <laughs> the Merit Award winners in the category of uh, public In the Public Sector Award, uh, I'm just going to read them very quickly, and I'm going to wait if any of the award winners are in the audience again. Please wait until I get through all of these, and then all Thank the uh, merit winners, uh, please come to the pleasure. stage. The Royal Malaysian Police, the MSIP, of course, Malaysia, MSIP and K Thank and you. Kisti from the Korean Information Industries Association in Korea, the National Library Board of Singapore, Singapore Courts, Singapore State Courts, okay. the SA Department de la Meta, thank you. Thank you. Digital Wear of Colombia, Doctor, congratulations. And Core Farm from Colombia. Our next category is the Private Sector ICT Excellence Awards. All for not for all for-profit entities are eligible for this award. To be eligible, a corporation needs to use ICT to directly increase their ability to meet business objectives, improve their competitiveness, and better serve their customers. My pleasure to announce the winner of the Private Sector Award, Arantz Medical of New Zealand. Okay. Here to accompany Santiago will be Yvonne Chu from CISA, who will accept the award, uh, will give the award To Mr. Bruce Davies. Mr. Davies is the medical CEO of the organization. Congratulations. Mr. Davies, congratulations. Yes, please, please. Congratulations. Okay. The Merit Award winners in the, in the uh, Private Sector ICT Excellence Awards Active Hearts from Hong Kong. Fuel Loyal from Macedonia, Project Open Champi from Costa Rica, Hermes Video Solution from Hong Kong, Estina and its document signing portal of Lithuania, Singular Logic Greece, and OTE Greece. Our next award category is the Digital Opportunity Award. A recipient of this award must make a significant impact on improving Digital Opportunities for Those in Need. I am pleased to announce the winner of the Digital Opportunity Award, Project TIC as Conditions and Opportunities for the Integration of Rural Women in ICT Sector of Costa Rica. The project was developed by Cooperativa Savula Patisu. In order to, in, to receive the award on behalf of the award winner is our Honorable Alex Mora, the Minister of Foreign Trade and Government for Costa Rica.
The merit winners in the digital, the digital award category, Malaysia Digital Economy, Rainbow Show Rewards Program at, at Baptist Rainbow Primary School in Hong Kong, CELTAS by Same Network of Hong Kong. Congratulations to all of the winners. I am pleased to announce the winner of the Sustainable Growth Award in Public Transport by Makandiski Telecom Macedonia. Our member is Masset from Macedonia, and here to accept the award is uh, Mr. I'm, I'm going to try to do this right. Uh, Adelvo Munez, but before Mr. Munez gets up here, I'd like to invite the chairman of Wits's and vice the chairman, uh, the Wits's vice chairman of Europe, non-EU, Dr. Boris Kamenov. Could you please come over here, and uh, you're going to make the award to. Mr. Monaf, of the, he's the president of OT Systems Brazil, Deutsche Telekom. Our merit award winners are Armenian Union of Information Technologies Enterprise, the Armath Project, Mandalay Technology Company, Myanmar, and ATI Limited, Bangladesh. Our next category is Mobile Excellence Award. The award recognizes innovators, leaders, change agents, and trendsetters spanning the globe, global mobile ecosystem from lifestyle to technology to entertainment. In a world of new technology and innovations, this award takes into consideration the successful applications of mobile technology in areas of humanitarianism and health, mobile social awareness and justice, freedom of expression, sustainable growth, business and commerce, and the effective delivery of public services and transparency. I'm pleased to announce that the winner of the Mobile Excellence Awards is Korea Telecom for Giga LTE Services Republic of, of Korea. Uh, Dr. Wu, would you please, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Wu Keen uh, Park, please come back to the stage. And uh, we have the award being accepted by Mr. Chao Jung Lee, Executive Vice President of the Network uh, of O&M Headquarters and accompanied by Mr. Jean Bon Kim, Director of KT, Korean Telecom. I'd like at this time after this award to invite the Merit Award winners to please come to the stage. Once again, we want, to, we want to have you on the stage to be recognized. And after the ceremony, we will have private um, photographic sessions for you and uh, awards, OK? Ladies and gentlemen, the Merit Award winners.
WITSA and its WCIT 216 project office uh, is pleased to announce the creation of a new award. It's called the Emerging Digital Solutions Award, called WES. The program seeks to facilitate the cross-pollinization of digital solutions that are successfully being deployed in localities and regions to see if we can promulgate them, spread them throughout the world. We took existing solutions. They had to be real solutions. They were judged very critically. We had a number of, of uh, applicants, and we ended up choosing seven. At this point, I would like to uh, uh, thank our partners from Amora and Brazilian National Confederation of Services, CNS, and CEPRO for, for your support. I'd also like to ask uh, Giovanni Samanoa to come up, president of CESPRO, Mr. Luigi Nesse, president of Brazilian National Confederation of Services, Humberto Rob Rivero, chairman of Memora and also co-chairman of the West program to present the awards. We are pleased to announce that our first class, 216 class, consists of seven winners. One of these winners, as we call them up, uh, has been voted by their peers to be the best solution among the group. And they will get an ICT Excellence Awards from WITSA. I'd like to invite Zumpy CEO, Andre. Andretti, please, to come up. Congratulations, Andre. The next is, is uh, Eyewear Tech co-founder and CPO, Serben Magos from Switzerland. The third winner is Commandware Systems, Inc., Mike Morrow, Canada. Our next winner is Race IQ Engineering co-founder and president, James Jones, United States. Our fifth winner is Yuri Inc. CEO Bill Marino, United States. Our next winner, Synergy International Systems from Armenia, Annie G. Vorgi and Annie. Hova Anofsky. <laughs> Sorry about that. Tough. Our seventh and final winner is called Local Z Inc., founder and CEO, Mr. Artstad. Sokavin from Armenia. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you voted among you for the one you felt would be the most innovative solution in our new program. And you, vo you voted Commandware Systems with Mike Morrow. All right, Mike? Okay. Congratulations.
Yes. Another round of applause. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, ladies. Congratulations. Okay, our next award, ladies and gentlemen, is our Chairman's Award. This is the one that the Chairman picks out of all of the, the many, many, many applications that we had coming in. This is WITS's most prestigious Global ICT Award. This award received the highest ranking among all of the applicants. I would like to invite Stan Singh up to the stage from PECOM Malaysia, please. He is from our member association. I'm about to announce the Chairman Award winner. Our winner is Green Data Center LLP Malaysia, Mr. Matthew Rajandra, the Chief Executive Officer, Green Data Malaysia. Congratulations. Okay. Uh, uh, Jim, Jim, allow me just, yes, uh, this is just improvisation, okay? As you can see. I, I was trying that both Giovanni and Umberto said a few words about WETS, and I'm still hoping that they do. Umberto, could you come to the stage to talk about WETS? WETS means uh, WITSA Emerging Digital Solutions. And this is an award that is uh, uh, deliver for the first time in Witsa. And the reason I want Umberto to talk about it is because he was the one that came with the idea. So it's only fair, you know, for him to talk a little bit about what does this award mean. Please, Umberto. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. I wasn't expecting this. Our chairman, Santiago, thank you so much. And in fact, we have to thank also Jim uh, for the support standing behind this uh, uh, idea uh, that we exchanged and developed together with WITSA. So uh, as chairman of Memora, we're very proud to engage uh, with the WEDS program. Uh, my, my personal experience as, as an entrepreneur in the digital era here, starts here in Brasilia in 1996, when I was the first company registered as a dot-com company here in Brasilia. And experiencing all the, the hurdles and the, the challenges behind that uh, venture, uh, I, I could uh, get a sense of what is, it, what is it like to ramp up a company that is challenging the current status quo. So our goal with the WEDS program is to address exactly this, uh, to ease this process and the road ahead for entrepreneurs throughout the world. We want to see uh, companies that have the purpose, the integrity, the novelty, the sustainability, and the replicability to transform the lives of the people throughout the world using bits and bytes. So I guess we had a, a very good experience in our first class of WEDS with the seven companies that we just recognize it here a few minutes ago, and uh, I look forward that we can keep this program, our Chairman, Secretary General Jim, uh, for the next uh, World Congress on Information Technology. So, uh, in fact, I would like not only to recognize, but to thank these seven companies 
entrepreneurs from around the planet that are transforming the world uh, using digital solutions. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Humberto. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, WITSA established its highest global award. We call it the WITSA Eminent Persons Award. We set this up, began it in 2010. This award is not necessarily uh, awarded to a person or persons related at all to the ICT industry. The one qualification, however, is they have to have made or continue to make a significant contribution to mankind. Our first award winner was Dr. Nelson Mandela. Our second was the father of the smartphone revolution, Mr. Mike Lazaridis in Canada. The third and fourth were the fathers of the internet. Of course, Vint, he's an award winner. Thank you, sir. Uh, we also awarded uh, recently the two fathers of the Wi-Fi as we know it today. We have a special night tonight because both of our winners are here. One knows he's going to receive the award, another does not. The first award winner is Dr. M Miguel Angel Angelo Laporta Nicolaias from Duke University. Please come up here, please, and let me read your bio. This gentleman is an amazing man that might change the lives of hundreds of thousands of people. He's a distinguished professor of neuroscience and professor of neurobiology, biomedical engineering and psychology at the neuroscience and, and of the, uh, the neuroscience center at Duke University. He's the founder of the scientific director Edmund and Lily Safra International Institute for Neuroscience of Natal. Dr. Nicolaias is also the founder of Walk Again Project, an international consortium of scientists and engineers dedicated to the development of exoskeleton devices that will assist severely paralyzed patients to regain full control of their walking. Dr. Nick Nicolaias has dedicated his career to investigating how the brain of freely behaving, freely behaving animals encodes sens sensory and motor, motor information. As a result of his studies, Dr. Nicolaias was the first to propose and demonstrate that animals and human subjects can, in fact, utilize their electronic brain activity to directly control the other parts of the body that are in a paralytic state. Through his work, he has discovered a series of psychological, physiological principles that govern the operation of the brain circuitry. Dr. Nicolaias pioneered BMI studies that have become extremely influential since they offered potential new therapies for patients suffering from severe paralysis, Parkinson's disease, and epilepsy. Today, numerous neuroscience laboratories in the US Europe, Asia, and Latin America have incorporated his experimental paradigms to study a variety of neural systems. His research has influenced basic and applied research in computer sciences, robotics, and biomedical engineering. He's a member of the French and Brazilian acad academies, uh, acad academies of science, and he's authored over 200 manuscripts, edited numerous books, special publications, he holds three U.S. patents. He's the author of Beyond Boundaries, the new neuroscience of connecting the brain with machines to change the way our lives will work. And, and most recently co-authored The Relati uh, Relativistic Brain, How It Works and Why It can be Cannot Be Simulated by a Turing Machine. Ladies and gentlemen, here's a man who's leading an effort to allow people to walk again, to control their muscles. Congratulations, sir, and thank you so much. Congratulations. Congratulations. Would you like to say a few words?
Now, if, uh, if, you, if you don't mind, I, I, I made an omission here, and I apologize for this. I would like the Wits of Board, please, to join us up here. And for this presentation, I apologize for not allowing, not uh, remembering, but we will be here for the next one. So please come up here and enjoy the, uh, the, the award with uh, our Amendment Persons Award. Thank you. So welcome to Wits of Board. Jim, I would also like to invite, excuse me, just give me a few seconds. I would also like to invite our friend Alex Mora Minister of Commerce from uh, Costa Rica. Alex, please. Alex made quite an effort to be here tonight. And uh, if, if you can help me to hand out this award, Alex, please. From, uh, from a Latin American to another Latin American, because this is, this is for you, Alex. I mean, uh, if you can hand it out. Congratulations, Dr. Congratulations. Uh, please, with the board, please remain and for the next award. Our next recipient of our Eminent Persons Award Needs no introduction, Dr. Bill McGee. Now I would like to invite Dr. Dean Cerf to hand out this award from a doctor to another doctor, even though it's, uh, uh, the other is medical and the other one is PhD. Dr. Cerf, could you please? Now there's one more, one more award, and ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. You've been wonderful tonight. Um, this is a very, very special award. It's never, it's never been done before. Um, there are times when words cannot adequately express the true contribution of a person, a person who has made a. Uh, significant contribution to an organization. How do you thank a person who for four years has worked full -time, two full-time jobs, one supporting his family, the other one leading an international organization in 82 countries? How do you thank a person who, no matter the situation, remains totally calm, professional, and polite? And how do you thank a person who shows the utmost respect for everyone he comes in contact with and always greets you with a smile? How do you thank a person who's a true friend and who accepts people who, for who they are no matter what their strengths or shortcomings? And how do you thank a person who, by every measure, led a dedicated board of directors and a secretariat to achieve the most significant results in the 40-year history of WITSA? Of course, the person I'm referring to is Chairman Santiago Gutierrez. Thank you. 
I would like Vince Cerf to present this award along with the Wits Award. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Samuel. Thank you. I would also like to thank his lovely wife, Evi, for her support as Santiago has Evie, been traveling so around the world. Evi, you, you, can you stand up and, and take a bow, please? <laughs> thank you very much. Yes, always. Always be thank you. I would like to read the, the award uh, so that you, you're aware of what the award says. For outstanding dedication to the growth of the global ICT industry and leadership of WITSA as chairman from 2012 to 2016, Brasilia Brazil 216, congratulations, Santiago. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'd like to invite Dr. Surf to say a few words. So, ladies and gentlemen, I have the honor of making a last remark. I want to draw your attention to what you have just seen. What you've seen is an incredible commitment of human intellect and determination of all of the award winners that you saw tonight. And it's a personal challenge to every one of you coming from WITSA that this is something you can do too. If they can do it, you can do it. So your challenge is to go out and show that determination, commitment, and success. So the next time we have a WITSA, you'll be up here on the stage too. Thank you very much. Jim, you've done a wonderful job of reminding us what people can do if they are determined. Thank you for that reminder. All right. Thanks again, everyone. We're now going to the reception. Yes, sir. I had asked Santiago. He said he may not, have not but he changed his mind. I think he's being pushed by the board. No, to... no I didn't change it. They okay. changed my mind. They changed your mind. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I really don't want to say much. Okay? I'm, I'm very thankful. That's the main feeling that I got right now, thankfulness. Uh, I just would like to encourage you to keep doing the good job that you've been doing during the last few years, and I'm sure you will because we got a very, very professional board now, which is excellent. You know, that's very encouraging. And uh, thank you very much. I didn't expect this. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Frank. Thank you very okay, much. Okay, now please enjoy the reception, you, and uh, we'll see you over there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Stan. Thank you. Hi.